<laughs> I, I wish I gave that, that, I wish I was recording first before that death candle analogy, but that's okay. We can, we can talk about a little bit more of that stuff uh, now that I'm recording. So just out of curiosity, do you guys have any questions now? Now that we kind of got the whole tutorial out of the way, do you guys have any kind of questions on like process or what do you guys want to talk about today? Like, what are you doing? What are you doing good in your trading? What are you doing bad? Like, let's talk about some things. Are there any topics we should cover today? Let me know. Let me know. This is your chance, man. I know it's a slow day. I know most people are out, but let me know, man. Or I could just, I could just rant on some stuff. You know me, man. I could go off on 10,000 different subjects, but you know, the first thing I will actually talk about is what Xander just said, guys, this is so good when it comes to psychology and boy, man, was I, um, just, there's levels to this stuff, right? There's levels. And you know, Bao talks about this a lot and he has for a million years, dude, on this, but you guys should not be trading real money or, or sizing a lot or going too down the rabbit hole of real money trading until you get your life right. Now, to get your life right, what does that mean? Getting out of debt, making sure the breakup with your ex-girlfriend is truly officially over, you're moved out you know, appropriately, you don't have all these things hanging over your head. To be a trader, man, you really got to indoctrinate yourself into the charts and it's tough, man. And oh, sick, freeze. Awesome, man. Glad you liked, buddy. Welcome to MIC, man. Um, yeah, 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 man. We try to drop gems as much as we can for you guys, man, as much content. But when it comes to getting your life right, guys, is in the beginning. So like, let's, let's rewind seven years ago, right? Boy, man, I had so much drama in my life, bro. I was early 20s. I, I, I God, it might even be eight years at this point. Uh, I was 20. Yep, yeah, dude, it's eight years. I was 23 years old when I first started learning. And, you know, I was a part of Furu services. I was chasing alerts. I didn't know, dude, my, I didn't know my back from my front. I just didn't know. So, you know, I was doing all the things that I, I teach you guys not to do, but I was trading. And here's the worst part, bro. Here's the worst part about when I started. I, well, I guess depending on how you look at it, cause it worked out in the end, I took a bet on myself, but I took a lot of money on credit cards. I took a bet on myself and put, took 30, 35 grand on credit cards that I didn't have and I put it into my trading account. Now it totally worked out. And obviously fast forward, you know, eight years later, but I really took a gamble on myself, man. I was scared shitless, but here's the problem about that. My life was not secure in the fact mentally I had debt. Now I was, I was with an ex-girlfriend that was so fucking volatile, dude. Like shout out Erica, the Puerto Rican, the most beautiful girl you've ever seen in your life. But Oh my God, bro. Did that come with drama? And, and like, I never slept back then. I was like in college, I was trying to like pay rent. I was trying to do this. I was working a freaking job. I hated dude. I absolutely hated. So my life, bro, <laughs> dude, she blocked me. <laughs> I couldn't even, <laughs> no, dude. I mean, I got some photos somewhere probably, but I'm like, dude, I'm blocked. I can't even see what she looks like these days, but she was so beautiful, man. And, but boy, did it come with problems. My point is guys, my point is my life was so chaotic. The first two years I forced trading. And when I say I forced, dude, I forced it. And I didn't know sizing back then. So I put myself in trades that would have blown me up in one trade. Had I known what I know now, I didn't even know. I didn't even fucking know, dude. I was trading on goddamn debt. I didn't even know. <laughs> David, awesome. Yeah, the crazy brother. <laughs> the point is, guys, the point is, it worked out in the end, but for so many, it doesn't. And I wish, I wish if I could go back in time, I would say to myself one thing, Tosh, I don't care if you paper trade for two years in the beginning, get your mind right before you risk real capital. Don't risk it on debt, break up with the girl, move out, get your headspace, get your, you know, get a studio apartment alone that's 200 square feet if you have to, just to get your mind clear, bro. All I'm saying, is the more shit you got to distract you outside of your trading, it's gonna show up in your trading. Now that doesn't mean you can't give it all to education. In fact, that's when you should be going balls deep into education because you are trying for a better circumstance. You're trying for a better life. But dude, please don't make the mistake I did and had so many years of building bad habits because I forced 
when I was trying to fix a situation by making the money to do so. And it made it worse for years until it got better because I'm probably one of the most persistent men you've ever met in your life. But you have to go at this in spades, man. And you have to be careful, bro. You got to be careful. I, here's the, cause here's the, here's the worst case that could have happened. I remember a trade I took. I'll never forget it. It was a trade I took. It, still to this day, it was the most money I made on a long trade. On a long, not on a short, not on a short. I made way more money short, but on a long. And I didn't know what I was doing back then. I was, I was trading on debt. I had like 35,000 on credit cards, which, well, which obviously was siphoned out and I put into a trading account. There were ways to kind of go around the credit creditors back then and be like, hey, yeah, I'm going to do this for like a business, et cetera. So you could pull it out. But so I funded a trading account. And so I was basically trading debt money, right? Maybe I had like 7,000 to my name in like a checking account, but that's not the same, right? Like it was trading on debt. And I remember longing a stock one day, 500 shares of an $80 stock that was moving like $20 in a day. Like dude, 500 shares. I didn't even know what I was doing. I bought it on like a massive dip and it ripped up and I made thousands of dollars in seconds. I mean, dude, I was up $9,000 and I swear to God, dude, maybe 15 fucking seconds. And like, I fell to the floor after closing the trade and I was literally like in the fetal position. Like, what the fuck did I just do? Because I was not super stoked that I made the money. I almost shit myself knowing I could have lost $40,000 in a blink of an eye. Guess what? Two days later, a T12 halted, dropped 60 points in one day overnight. Bro, if that was me already trading on debt, what do you do? Declare bankruptcy at that point? Your mind's not right. I was so lucky. I was so lucky, bro. I was so I cleaned up that day for a kid with probably a 30K account, but I didn't know how and I didn't know why. This is how dangerous this job is. If you don't know what you're doing, I didn't have my life right. So I was trading chaotically. And I'm, you know, I've always been kind of like that. I've always, you know, been kind of a shoot from the hip kind of guy. I, you know, I've, I've just, I've lived a really chaotic life, man. I've dated crazy girls. I've freaking moved everywhere. I've done this, et cetera. You know, I've got a lot of, I've had a lot of failures in my early twenties. The point is, is I've always been a shoot from the hip, but when you approach trading like that, if your life's not right or your mind's not right, and boy, was this a rant on that, you're in trouble, man. You're in trouble. So you got to take it slow. And the first piece of advice is just, no guys, this is not a, this is not a, it's not a race, man. It's a marathon. And a marathon is designed to go the test of time. And what that means is if the market is going to be here for the next hundred years, you got to be comfortable with just saying, Hey, Tosh, you know what, man, I don't need to force death candles today. I don't know how to play them. I don't know how to size. I don't know how to set a hard stop. You know what I'll do? I'll watch education for a year and then I'll trade small because maybe I don't have a big trading account yet. Guys, I it's debt is bad, man. Don't do debt. Don't shoot from the hip. Don't guess plan your life, man. And don't stay in a relationship that is toxic as fuck, dude. Like I'm telling you, man, it's just going to bleed into your career, dude. And, and the, and, and like I said, trading is the ultimate video game. It's a business, dude. It's a business. So when you treat trading like a business versus, you know, just a hobby, you're going to start seeing those kind of results and you're going to be harder on yourself, which is actually good. You know, I, I know it's hard to be hard on yourself, but look, if you got a boss telling you what to do, man, you got to learn how to tell yourself what to do, bro. Yeah. I tell you, you got to learn how to tell yourself what to do and be honest with yourself to, you know, <laughs> Woody, that is the worst four word letter possible. I agree. I agree, man. I totally agree. And again, it works out for people, but it doesn't for many. And I was just one of those outliers that I was one of those outliers that it worked out for, <laughs> you know, I was working a job. I hated it. I was in a ton of debt, but it worked out. Thank God. But dude, I was an outlier. It doesn't work out a lot for those guys, man. They get scammed by services. They fucking blow up, dude. And now they're like, holy shit, you owe your credit cards 35K. And now you owe your brokerage 35K. Like, dude, it, I, like it's, it's, it's just crazy, bro. So not everyone is an outlier. Yes, I had debt, but I also had a job I didn't like. I had a relationship I didn't like. I had a lifestyle I didn't like. And I was trading and, and, and my personality in my trading was all of that combined. That's the point. 
drama free life as much as possible. So that was my rant on kind of that <laughs> Steven photo. Uh, work is really getting in the way of my trading. Ha I'm here there now. Yeah, Kyle, you know, again, man, again, you know, guys, if you have work getting in the way of your trading, remember 1% better daily is all you can ask of yourself, man. Don't go crazy. Don't rush the process, bro. If you get 1% better today than you were yesterday, that is a move in the right direction. Again, dude, you can look at your life as a chart like B-Way or you can look at your life as a chart like the fucking spy, dude. You think the spy said right here, like, oh, dude, like work's getting in the way. Fuck it. No, dude, just 1% better, 1% better. And you gradually uptrend and you get better. This will be here for 100 years, bro. I don't care what Bitcoin maximalists are like, dude, Bitcoin's the future. It's that maybe it is. Maybe it is. And, and every transaction, will, but the stock market's still going to exist. They'll just figure out how to incorporate Bitcoin. The point is, is, this will be here. This is the American economy. You know what I mean? The stock market's going nowhere, guys. So just don't rush yourself, man. Get your mind right. And the more you can focus on the good of getting your mind right, the better you're going to trade. And the less pressure you're going to take off yourself in a bad way. Not the accountability, because you need to be your own boss, but the pressure. Keep the accountability. Take off the pressure. Uh, one side of my family is Puerto Rican. So true. <laughs> yeah. I gotta tell you, man, I learned from my mistakes. I'd like to think I do. And I don't know if I'm going Puerto Rican again, dude, she beat my ass or she almost did. Yep. First education. Second is PNL. Never, 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 never the way around. God, dude, that is Steven. That's a really put that in quotes, man. That's Steven's quote of the year, man. First is education. Second is PNL. Never the way around Steven. Uh, Xander, yeah, I risk ten dollars per trade. My account is five thousand. That's literally zero point two. I mean, you, yep, I can lose five hundred times in a row before blowing. You mean ten cents, brother? Um, gotta risk very small before being consistent. Yes, correct, Xander, hundred percent. I will size up slowly once I start seeing. Oh, oh, you mean ten dollars? Oh, ten over. Oh, yeah, bro, absolutely. I mean, you know, <laughs> Xander, that's almost a little too conservative. Even, even myself, man, who's like. I would say you could up that to at least 25 bucks, bro. But if you're just learning and not trying to make the commissions, yes, it's all about just learning right now. It's not about the money. Totally, bro. Totally. But if you are risking $10, bro, on a, on a mathematical side, I don't know if you'll ever be able to overcome the commissions doing that. It would probably be almost impossible. But if you're just doing it for the education of learning and also risking real money simultaneously to get the feel of it and get your beak wet, 100%, bro. 100,000% you should only be risking a little, little, little bit of money. Um, let's see. Debt sucks big time, dude. Debt is the worst. Yep. Words of wisdom. Thanks, bro. Yeah. You know, I mean, just Kyle again, man, if it's just, it's just things you learn, right? If I could go back in time, dude, there's very specific things that I would tell myself before. And I'd say, you know what, man, fuck debt, dude. Don't, it's too scary. And it's going to build bad habits. Go work three jobs, go work graveyard. If you have to get 25 K in order and then learn how to trade and do it small size. Like Xander's doing, do it really small. I forced and rushed a lot of things and it put my mind in years of chaos. And thankfully, I guess there's a silver lining to anything. It made me who I am today. Um, but it also gave me the perspective to teach you guys not to do that. It gave me the perspective as an educator to be better on my educating, right? Like Orbao or Alex or the things that we did. Um, yeah. Hate debt, student, student debt. Oh my gosh. Yeah, seriously. Uh, I am just looking at my stats, not including commissions. See if I'm, yes, correct, bro. That's, that's the way you should be going at it right now. 100 shares until true consent. I love it, man. I love it, dude. And nobody should ever be embarrassed by even if it's one share. Dude, we are all just trying to learn this game right in the beginning. And to do so, you got to put some skin in the game. Like you got to put some money on the line. But if you can keep it really small, you're doing it because that's part of process, not because you're trying to make money. You're going through the rounds of do I understand price action? And that's key. And that's key. Spy, we just got a little poll, actually. Nice little poll. Good. Bring Spotify down. I want some more. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Do you guys have any questions on that? That's kind of, a, that's kind of like, um, that's not necessarily a charting rant. That's more so just, you know, what's the perspective of starting out in trading versus, you know, down the road or, you know, even just entering the field of what it means to be a trader. But yeah, I mean, that's part of it, right? So much of this game, man, is what does it mean to be a trader and how does it mean to execute as a trader? They're very different things. It's mental versus um, you know, actually physical. It's just like, it's like, do you understand the chart? Sure. But do you understand how to deal with the emotions? Two things, two things. 
Spy and Qs are pulling. For those who don't know, who are probably brand new to trading, Spy is the S&P 500 and the Qs are tech. So this is, you know, the biggest index for tech. So when this pulls, you can pretty much guarantee that almost every single tech stock, which this is actually still considered, um, you know, what's another one, Zoom, tech stocks are going to probably pull with it. You know, Apple, um, Apple's been on the decline today. These are more big cap related guys, like, you know, three out of four stocks follow the big cap, but um, small caps don't really, they just don't really feel this. You know, Tesla's pulling a little bit right now because the queues are pulling. That's just how that goes. You know, I'm a big cap and small cap trader, but I pay attention to it all. I, I'm always watching the spy, man. I'm, I'm always watching the spy. Yep. Any questions, guys? Any specific questions? Or I can talk about a couple other things. Who's, who's first day in MIC, man, or yesterday? Like, did you guys just join? Anybody here who's like, yesterday was like your first day or today? Maybe? Maybe not? Man, thank God yesterday was uh, nice, nice. J. Cal oh, dude, that's so funny. J. Calvin, and you won, dude. What did you win again? I forgot. Did you win the monitor? That's fucking awesome, dude. Michael, what's up, buddy? That's crazy. J. Calvin, his, day, his first day was yesterday, and he won uh, one of Alex's monitors. Not his physical monitor, but the exact same model. So we'll ship that over to you, bro. That's awesome. That's so cool. I love seeing people win, man. <laughs> Minor lotteries in MIC, right? Michael, welcome, man. I hope you like MIC, bro. Seriously. How can I not want to stay here? <laughs> yeah, man. Well, that's that's what we try to do, man. We try to give you guys the best community with the best options possible. <laughs> Michael, awesome, man. Great, great stuff. Guys, on YouTube, I'm also watching the YouTube if you guys have any questions. Um, I see one, Bart. What's up, buddy? Um, MIC is looking good. Thinking about joining. Yeah, just t just text me, man. If you want to, you know, a deal on like annual or something, you know, just text my business line. Um, if you're looking at the monthly, you can definitely get the fifty percent off the first month. And your question is, do you use scanners to find your setups? Um, you all mentioned. If so, which ones? Not happy with scans. So. Bart, save yourself some money, bro. Scans are totally a waste of money. And I'm not talking about scans with a Z. I'm, I mean, all scanners, like they're just so unneeded, bro. Cause here's why every single day, dude, Alex is East coast, right? So he's the first one up and I'm, you know, West coast. So I'm always like, dude, by the time I don't need a scanner personally, nobody does because by the time Alex wakes up, he is the scanner. And then Bow's posting scans, man. Every day I just click over the watch list an hour before open. I'm like, Alex, what are we looking at, baby? Let's go. Like, that's the whole thing, man. So, dude, you definitely don't need to pay for a scanner, bro. I promise you, you do not need to pay for a scanner. Put that money in your education, bro. Scans are just not needed at MIC. And then, not to mention, you know, we do all this in the morning with the watch list. Bro, check this out. You got a main trading chat, 2,066 members. Bro, we're going to be talking about anything that's relative. I promise you. You're not going to miss shit. <laughs> it's going to be right here. Like, it's just funny, man. It's just funny. Because, like, once you see that you don't need a scanners, you really see it. Yeah, like Joe Angelo just said, plenty of scanners in main chat. Dude, you do not need to pay one. Lose the scanner, pay for the monthly. I love it. Uh, where were we, though? I think I missed a couple. Selena, shout out to all the mods and mentors in the background work uh, for the annual boot camp help. Thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's funny guys. Cause like it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's freaking crazy, man, because the, you know, I had a friend, dude, I, I had a, a distant friend, right? Like not someone I hang with every day, but a distant friend, you know, that, that I've been talking to for a while. And he was like, dude, you must be cleaning up millions through MIC. I go millions. I go, that'd be fucking nice. Are you out of your mind? I go, dude, you have no idea what it takes to market and keep the lights on of something like this. Dude, me and Alex cracked up when I told, I was like, fucking millions. I was like, bro, you're out of your fucking mind, dude. MIC was created more so guys to keep full-time traders like Val, Alex and myself and the mods even busy and to have people to talk to, man, we don't make shit from this, bro. And like, I, we mention that every now and then, and I don't really like to harp on it too much because let the trolls think what they want. They think we're getting rich and I got a fucking Bugatti in the last three years because <laughs> we won't pay ourselves shit. In fact, so much so that you'd be like, why do you guys still do this? Aren't you burnt out? And look, we are obviously very tired at times,
but guys, it's, I'm telling you, man, I'm telling you, like, we, dude, it all goes back in the company. It all goes back in MIC because we have big plans for MIC one day. Who knows if it might not be on wall street? I don't know. But the point is not only do we get to help people with the knowledge that we know, um, we get to stay busy, which is good because Bao and Alex were practically fucking suicidal when we created MIC. Most people don't know that. They talk about it here and there, but you guys don't understand, man. Bao was drinking himself into a fucking coma. Dude, not like the funny part that we talk about today, into a fucking depression coma, dude. Me and Alex literally were like scared for our friend, our best friend. And Alex was depressed off his ass, dude. The, the MIC gave us life purpose, man. You guys, most people looking in now who haven't been with us for three and a half years don't know that. And, it's, and it sucks. I wish you guys knew that. But dude, MIC was literally, it saved our lives. Like you guys, you guys have no idea, dude. This, this was never to create what the trolls think it was to create. This, dude, we, this saved our lives. Like you have no idea. So hopefully that's clear. I know, I know the OGs understand um, but you know, that's just the way of it, man. So, yep. Being able to have multiple gurus is really nice. Harry Haas and man. yeah, night run. That's, that's one of the coolest things that we can, um, that th th here's the thing guys, here's the thing going back. This is why MIC is so amazing. It's not a one man show. Anybody looking in, man, we got a full team. Check this out. Oops. One sec. Guys. If I'm not enough help for you, if Bear's not enough help for you, if Tom Diesel's not enough, you gotta throw a dart. Throw a freaking dart. Dude, I'm telling you, throw a dart. You got so many people to help, man. So thank you, Selena, for that. Recently joined monthly member. When can we watch the boot camp, right? Yes, um, you can. It's on the video library, guys. We posted the, um, Alex posted yesterday the individual presentations when it comes to the main one in the morning. I think, I think Alex has, um, I think we're editing all that together and making sure you guys have from start to finish the, uh, the live stream. So yeah, we'll have that up soon. <laughs> yeah. Where's the Lambos? Dude, I've had, I would have three Lambos, bro. If fucking, if MIC was paying us millions. Why? I love cars, dude. Why not? No, dude, you guys are out of your mind, man. All the fucking trolls thinking we're paying ourselves millions of dollars. <laughs> oh man. Idiots, dude. Idiot. The thing is, you know, what's so funny about money, dude. Alex, Alex had a troll the other day, bro. That was like, that saw his YouTube live and was like, Alex has a Lamborghini in a trap house. Like that house is ugly. He's not making millions a year. He's not making millions. It's all bullshit, right? And Alex was like, dude, does it, like not only did the troll show how broke he was, show that he's never had a dollar in his life because he doesn't understand money. Dude, do you guys realize you make two mil a year, you give a mil to the IRS? A million. And second, if you want to get anywhere in life, like Alex Bow and myself want to get to, your first million, you don't go buy, dude, say you make a, okay, say you make a million dollars tomorrow on trading, right? Let me give you a, let me give you a little finance tip. You make a million dollars in trading tomorrow, 500,000 is going to the IRS, 500,000. Then guess what? You go get a nice luxury S-Class Mercedes for 120 grand, right? Well, you got give or take 380, 400,000 left. Dude, you know how fast and how expensive life is food every day or rent at your apartment or your mortgage. Like, dude, people have no idea, man, how fast money goes until you pour it under assets and live under your means. I don't care if you make 20 grand a month. I don't care if you make 200 grand a month until you got assets that produce cash flow for every part of your life. You don't spend money to look like you're rich. So when a troll comes on YouTube live, he's like, oh my God, Alex has a Lamborghini because he's car obsessed, but a nasty house. Alex is like, yeah, okay. He doesn't see the 10,000 investments I have that, that produce cash flow on the side. Fucking idiot. Like, are you kidding? So it's so funny. Like when people open their mouths, they actually tell you their level of education on money. It's just fun. Dude, like literally if Alex was posting nothing but private jets and Lamborghinis, I would actually think he was broke, <laughs> like just trying to look rich. Dude, trust me, man. That's the whole point about money, man. The sleepers make money. The guys that don't flaunt shit and have a, you know, a vice every now and then. Like I said, you know, we spend money every now and then here and there on something. I like watches. Alex likes cars way more. And so we're going to put a little money towards there because you got to have a vice. You got to have an outlet for all the hard work you do. But dude, when it comes to it, everything, dude, 
act like you're broke, bro. And if you're smart, if you know how investments are lined up, you are fucking broke. I'm cash broke 24 seven because every dollar I get gets thrown into an asset. I don't keep it in the bank and I don't keep it on freaking luxuries, dude. I don't wear a designer. Every dollar I make, guess what? What doesn't go to the IRS goes to an asset people don't see or I don't even see at the start. That's the point. Bingo, bro. Bingo. Let the trolls think what they want. It's just funny, bro. It's just, I swear to God, bro, I have to do like a financial literacy course so these people can understand. It, it just doesn't even make sense, bro. It doesn't even make sense. Um, I'd love to learn enough to help others out. This is the place. Hey, Jay, that is the point of MIC, bro. I love that. Once, here's the beautiful thing about that, John, is once you understand, bro, then you're going to want to help out other people. That's just the community vibe, man. That's what it's all about. We understood at the creation of MIC, we had a couple things that we could teach others. And dude, now the people that we taught are teaching others. Isn't that sick? Um, you should talk about the, the future of MIC. Like, aren't you guys wanting to teach some investing real estate? It's a, yeah, so like, we're trying to figure out how to do that, man, because you know, my investing club is not just stocks. It, the, the, the vision was always beyond stocks. So that'll come in time, Xander, I think. We're always just trying to figure out how we can teach you guys and give you the most value possible. Like I said, you know, Val, Val, Alex, and myself are really big into investments outside of stocks, right? Like you have stocks, obviously, which is earned income. Like, dude, you literally have to work for the money. Arguably, swing trading is passive income. If you just, you know, you don't really work for it, you get in a position, you look a week later, a month later. Um, I do a lot of that. But the point is, is is, you know, anytime that you have to work for money, right? That's, that's earned income. You have to show up. You almost have to clock in to get the money. The beautiful thing is, and what we'll probably teach in the future is, Hey guys, once you have some money, here's how to set yourself up and not be an idiot and blow it. It's like, dude, you can make $15 million on a lottery tomorrow. And then you could be broke the next year because your spending habits are fucking terrible. So, you know, there's two kinds of people, man, there's consumers and then there's investors, man. And, and I've just always been the type of guy that, well, no, no, I'm sorry. That's a total lie. I was not an investor in my early twenties. Since my mid twenties, I always just wanted to be an investor. So like, <laughs> here I'm like, Oh, since I've been 16, no, dude, I blew a lot of money as a kid. Um, any dollar that I made, I would just chill out towards whatever I wanted, man. Shit. Father's birthday, get him whatever he wants. Brother's birthday, you know, freaking cousins, whatever. I used to just spend all my money. Now it's like, dude, stack your cheese, bro. Stack the cheese. And then one day, see what most people don't get. And I know a lot of members get it because they're smart individuals, but people want to act like retirement's an age. Like, Hey, you're 69. Let's get on social security. Let's pull out retirement. Let's do that. Dude. It's freaking, it's not about that, bro. It's a number. Most people don't realize that if you have $3 million tomorrow, and I know that sounds like a lot of money to some, and then it's relative to others and sounds like crumb cake to others. But the point is, is if you have $3 million tomorrow, and this is more of an exaggerated example, but you throw that into 4% dividend stocks, um, you know, for the rest of your life, you're collecting $120,000 a year, whether the stocks perform good or bad, depending on the fact that they don't change their dividend yield. So most people don't realize that all you need to do is make $3 million, obviously after taxes, so you could throw it into investments. If you put that into dividend stocks, and that's one form, Imagine cash flow with real estate rental properties. So this is kind of a funny webinar today because it's more on investing, but dudes, you would never have to, who here is spending $120,000 a year? Bullshit. That is, I mean, if you got a family and you're like travel a lot, I get it. But dude, I'm a single 31 year old with a dog. Like I don't spend $120,000 a year. Like that's, if you do, that's ridiculous. Like I just don't spend that much money. Cause I don't want to, I'm stack, 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 stack. So one day I have so much cash flow coming in. It's like, dude, you can afford whatever you want for the rest of your life. And then the beautiful thing that most people don't get is you can pass assets down, bro. You cannot pass down a car to your kid and he'll be okay. You can pass down a portfolio that produces dividends for the last 30 years. What do you think Warren Buffett's going to do, dude? If he has off, well, I'm, I mean, I'm sure he does have offspring and stuff. I don't know too, too much about his personal life, but I'm sure he'll probably give them a portfolio and say, look, if you never touch this Coca-Cola, you know, Berkshire Hathaway, et cetera, et cetera, are going to produce dividends for the rest of your lives. Give it to your kids and your kids give it to their kids. The point is, is you can pass down assets. You cannot pass down a job and you can't pass down material things and have that be the answer. You can pass down a fucking Lamborghini and in two years, it ain't worth shit. 
but you can pass down a portfolio. You can pass down a rental property. You can pass down a business that works is automated. And this is the shit that the world doesn't get it. They don't get it, dude. They don't get it. They just don't get it. I, I'll say it like this. I'll say it like this. I do a lot of, um, I like networking a lot, right? So networking is like my thing, like I, of all industries, man, of all industries, bro, you could be in Bitcoin, you could be in cryptocurrency, you could be in real estate. You, if you're doing good in your life and you, or you own businesses and you figured out something really cool that maybe I don't, I love networking with those people, bro. Masterminds, like things like that, because here's what's going to happen. You are going to meet people that are doing exactly what you envision and you can bond with them on a level. You don't just have to bond with traders, man. That's just one, that's just one slice of the pie of humanity, right? Like the collective experience and you can go to masterminds and learn from a lot of other people on all the different things like house hacking, all these type of businesses. And here's the thing. If I see like a, if I see, uh, I'll, I'll even say someone my age, like say I see a 31 year old drive up to a stoplight next to me. He's got a Richard Mill and a Rolls Royce. Dude, I literally, my first thought, and I know this is kind of like pessimistic, I assume he's absolutely broke. Do you have any idea how much money you should have in assets and cash flow and retirement or like ways to get that comfortably rather than just buy that stuff to have it because you could afford it? Like, dude, I assume someone that's like, quote unquote, balling is absolutely, and guess what? Nine times out of 10, they're broke. Trust me. They are over leveraged and have no money working for them. It's just the way of it, man. Welcome to America where you can leverage everything. <laughs> and most do. Oh, shit. Uh, Night Run. What, uh, Tosh, what's your watch of choice? A bright. Oh, no. I, well, I got a Rolex. You know, it was the one thing I splurged on. I said, when I hit three different assets and multiple income streams, I'll buy that for myself. So I did that. Um, but, but again, man, like, like I wouldn't do it again, like not for a long time, not until I have 10 assets and 15 forms of passive income. Like, again, you have to reward yourself a little bit, but don't go crazy, man. Don't go crazy, man. Because again, man, your money can either just get shelled out or work for you. I mean, dude, like, do you, do you oh my God, man. Like if you created, say an automated store, like a Shopify, Walmart, Amazon, things on the side of um, stock trading, and you racked up and you guys know how to use business credit cards. So like, you know, Chase Inc or Amex Platinum. I have a business Amex Platinum, right? If I say I leveraged a company um, outside of stocks, like this is totally different from stocks and say I spent, you know, anywhere from 20,000 to $100,000 a month on product, but it brought me a revenue. So say, even if I broke even, do you have any idea how many points your Amex would rack up or your Chase Inc that you could travel the world for free? and upgrade. Like people don't know this shit, dude. People don't know how much you can get money to work for you. It's crazy. So like the, again, again, it's a mindset, it's a lifestyle. And I swear to God, dude, one day I will create a freaking YouTube channel on this. How much it, you don't have to be a billionaire to start anything like that or talk about it. You got to just know the lifestyle. It's just a choice. If you get paid $10 a month after $3 goes to the IRS, what are you doing with the other seven? Now just incorporate that to millions if you want. If you make $10 million a month, what are you doing with the 5 million left over? Is it going to the Bugattis or is it going to something that is going to produce an ROI? So I, I, I don't know why I went on this rant today, but I, I just think it's, it's something to think about, guys. I just want you being smart with your money and I don't want you just shelling it out when you can get so ahead in life. Like, oh, you know what? I guess, I guess really the, the topic of this whole webinar was really get your life right first. That's what it's about. Get your life right first and you're gonna be able to trade correctly. If you know you have a ton of passive income coming in and you don't have to report to a job you hate, how do you think you're gonna trade? So much better, bro. So much better than is if you have no cash producing assets and you go, oh my God, I have to show up to a workplace I fucking hate and this is the only way I can pay, pay my rent. That's the difference, man. That's, it's a lifestyle, bro. Get yourself set up so that in your 40s, I'm talking to 20 and 30 year olds right now, get yourself set up in your you know, 20s and 30s to the point where when you're in your 40s, man, you never have to work a day in your life again if you don't want to. And that's only if you don't want to. I'm fucking obsessed with work, bro. I've got a ton of investments lined up outside of stocks. But the thing is, is even if I was worth you know, a billion dollars in fucking five years, I, I would still want to work every day because it's about making a difference. It's about going above and beyond. It's about creating a legacy. It's not about... It's, it's, it's just not about cars, man. It's leave an imprint, bro. Live life on your terms.
Although I should say, guys, though, I should say I did title this. As, <laughs> what did I title this webinar again? Oh, v, VRPX, VPRX, what was it? Hold on. I did title this one thing, and I do want to cover this really quick. One second. Let's talk about this for one second. Today was all about money flow and things like that. But when it comes to something like VRPX, guys, you have to be careful about this. Here's why. This is the topic of this actual webinar. Check this out. Oops. Sorry. One sec. There. Okay. What do you guys notice about this on the trap in the morning, right? What do you notice? Two things I want you guys to pay attention to. This is how you can identify a squeeze. Number one, multi-day runner. So you could just draw a line, draw another line. Multi-day, multi-day, guys. You got to be careful that you can't be rushing in short on something like this. Number two, number two, Joe Kelly and I have kind of made this famous at MIC. We talk about this a lot. When a stock is already kind of a hot chick, been running for a couple days, even if it's not, but you can just add these in the equation. When this bitch is playing ping pong with Pete VWAP all morning, guys, these things squeeze. These things squeeze to outer lines. So, you know, I didn't want any trader to trade this in the morning who was brand new because you can't really account for this amount of range. It's a lot of range. And you got, oh shit, it just started raining. <laughs> I live in Arizona and we barely get rain, but I just got rain. Oh shit. Dude, sick. Uh, it's raining outside. It's the, it's the little things, man. When you don't get a lot of rain, when it rains, you're like, oh shit. Uh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, what was I saying? What was I saying? So, you know, in a, in a stock like this, guys, with a lot of freaking range, be careful. Be careful. You don't know how to account for that range. So that's VRPX day. Money flow was elsewhere. You know, obviously we had like B way on pops in the morning because it was broken while the others were taking attention from it. We talked all about this in the boot camp. It's all about stock selection. It's all about money flow. If something has the attention, if something has the spotlight, you should not be looking at that to short. You should be focused somewhere else. If it doesn't have the attention and it gets the attention, now you longs know where to focus. If something is VWAP, over VWAP, strong, volume, deviation, making highs, you longs now have a first bounce option. Where is the focus, guys? Where is the focus? Uh, ooh, lots of comments, cool. This is a fun discussion today. I live all Bundy lifestyle, married with children, I can only afford it. <laughs> yep, 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 passive income, man. I cringe when I see people win the lotto, get a three mil and blow it up. Dude, I know people, yep, like who've like literally done shit like that. Dogecoin millionaire guy, for example, could have retired the rest of his life. Yep. Agreed too many litter than the U.S. Well, you know, U.S. is just based off debt. I mean, look at all the money printing, right? The day Nixon brought money off the gold standard, dude, money became debt. And to keep money in a bank account is just idiotic, dude. It's, I mean, you got to keep some, like, obviously for, you know, like in case your fucking transmission goes out or, you know, to have, you know, a backup of rent and stuff like that for normal people. But if you're well off and you want to start an investments, man, having money in the bank is just a, not going to pay you. And with inflation getting so fucking brutal, dude, and ramped up because Biden is a printing machine. And so is the U.S. government. And they have no plans to stop. Believe me, you know, if inflation's at 5.6, 6% right now, going up towards what they're saying, 15% in a couple years, bro, keeping money in the bank is suicide. Suicide. The only people in the biggest gap between the rich and the poor are the ones who don't have assets to the ones that do. This is why real estate takes off. This is why stock market takes off. This is why Bitcoin probably took off. And I'm not a Bitcoin maximalist or, you know, a professional there, but, you know, I'd, be, I'd love to talk to someone like that. But uh, I gave up anything material to travel the world full time. Can't be attached to a car that you're bouncing. Hey, yeah, totally. Steven, I've never been a much of a traveler. So I was kind of like rooting myself. But dude, if you're of that lifestyle, 100%, bro. Why would you have something material when you're chained to it? Car, house. Dude, Steven's living the, uh, the fucking nomad lifestyle. And I like it. And he's got zero debt. Uh, did the credit card hustle and got, did the credit card hustle and got free gas for a year plus uh, companion pass was <laughs> nice. I don't know what that means, Hoffer. I really don't, but great job. Uh, yeah, man, I got to create one, dude. I like talking, man. I like talking. I like conjecture, man. I like debating. I like talking, all that stuff, man. It's just fun. It's just fun. I just like helping people, man. If they can learn something from something I've learned or trial and error, that's the key. Pass it down. You can literally travel the world for two to four K a month, depending on how you like the role, but modest, but, but modestly I've been doing it for two. Yeah. Steven, most people think that they can only start living their lives when they're quote unquote rich. And then rich is always a never ending number 
which dude, I, I'm telling you, man, there's so many levels to rich, right? It's like, you would look at someone with a hundred grand in the bank and be like, Oh my God, bro. How did they do that? That guy's rich. And then there's people that would look at $5 million in the bank and then go, yeah, no, not that much money. You know what I mean? It's like, there's levels to this shit. So it's, it's just, just get to a point, man, where assets pay your life, whatever your lifestyle is. And now you're free. That's the true rich freedom. Cash flow in real estate with a great property manager. Now you're speaking my language, Kevin. Nice. Uh, let's see. Did the math with the three dividend stocks I picked, you could pay 700 million rent with 203 million buying power with a dividend distribution each month. Linger around. I know we're getting towards the end, guys. I'm trying to rush through this. Sorry. We only have like a couple more minutes. Um, trust me, traveling Europe is so much cheaper than living. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the thing most people don't realize, Stephen, is, dude, when you're traveling and paying your lifestyle in hostels or pubs or fucking Airbnbs, dude, you're not paying rent, bro. Like, your rent is the travel. So when it's like Stephen's in a new hotel every night or whatever, maybe with a new lady, it's like, dude, he's not paying, like, fucking rent, dude. Like, that's sick, right? Or a car payment. Think about that. Think about that, bro. That's $2,000 right there for just a decent apartment and a decent car lease or a finance, pretty much, well, not anywhere, but dude, that's $2,000 probably at least for car and housing, let alone if you're in LA, like I used to be four to five grand. Bro, you can travel the fucking world. <laughs> and if you know how to credit card hack, oh my God, bro, you could do a side business and travel for free. Nobody teaches this shit. Well, no, sorry. There are teachers of this shit, but most 99% of people aren't listening and they're working jobs they hate and they're doing stuff they hate and they're banking on lotto tickets that they, they just don't understand. It's so easy to make money guys out there. You have no idea. Keeping it is the, is the thing that was not taught. Making money is easy. I was making money as a 13 year old kid actor with fucking Taylor Lautner, that fucking Twilight kid. It's easy to make money. It's not easy to keep it. So you got to learn how to keep it. And you got to learn the fundamentals of even the lifestyle of how an investor thinks versus a consumer. A consumer says, I make $100, I spend $100. And then you're always behind. Then the IRS is knocking at your door and they're excited. They want their money. An investor goes, I made $100. Guess what? I get to spend ten dollars because IRS gets $30 and 70, you know, or $60 went to investments. It's a, it, it, that's, that's it. That's, there's no way around it. That's no way around it. You give me a check for a hundred, hundred thousand tomorrow. I, guess what? Guess what? IRS can take their, take their fill and every other dollar is going into something that can produce me more income. That it's, it, it doesn't go to a new watch. I got one watch. I like it. It's fancy. It's cool. I got a car. I like, What do you think of real estate strategy? The Burr method, just one. I've never done it myself. I've never personally done flips and Burr and refinance that buy, what is it? Buy, renovate, uh, uh, like refinance and repeat or some shit. Um, I have never done that specifically. Uh, if you don't know what you're doing, you can get creamed just like, just like not knowing how stocks work. But if you are, have a team around it from um, a couple of guys that I'm friends with that do it, um, then you're good. But again, bro, the, the Burr method, you know, the Burr method, everybody should do the Burr method. The Burr method is only good, just like stocks. If you're educated, just because the stock market exists doesn't mean you're going to make money. You will get smoked if you don't buy right. Correct. Correct though. Yes. Yes. And I'm no master. Dude, I, I can't even pronounce Burr. What is it? Buy, renovate, rinse, repeat, or some shit. I'm, I'm not a master at that. I just know some things. Like, I'm not a master at anything. Yep. Yeah, I hope this helped, guys. I, today, I just want to do something different. I kind of wanted to do a little bit more on just the perspective and mindset of things. Um, we've done, we, you know, we did a whole boot camp yesterday on, on you know, uh, what's it called? Price action and charting and all that stuff. And some days you just got to talk it out, man, and what it means to be a trader or what the goals are, right? Like my goal will, will have, well, has been for a while and will continue for the future, probably for the next 20 years is just accumulate as much money and assets as possible. So you, your life later on is just easier. And that's just the way I think. You don't have to think like that, but you know, there's so many ways to think, right? And I think it's fun because if you make everything just about trading, 
it's it's gonna drive you nuts dude it's gonna it's, it's gonna be like focusing on what it's gonna be too ocd and tunnel vision your main focus if you're here should be trading but it's good to kind of explore the realm of other things right and have your hands in the pie of a lot of stuff and if you know because look maybe not every single person in mic is made for trading and that's you know that is going to be the reality for a couple um, I hope, I wish it was, and I hope everybody gets the most value out of it and, and, you know, everybody becomes the trader that they want to be. But at the end of the day, guys, and I'll end with this is just because you joined MIC and you realize maybe even trading wasn't for you, or maybe it was, doesn't mean you can't get value. The people are here, the networking, Cole Cash, astrologer, dude, astrologer's an astrologer. Guys, you need to hire an astrologer. You got, you got astrologer right here. Like that's, that's my point, man. The community is fucking amazing in the fact that it's just, there's, there's just so many outlets, man. So I love talking. I could talk your ear off another two hours, man. It's just fun. I love you guys, man. But let's do this next week. I'm glad I caught today. I uh, woke up like five minutes before the open. I was going to take the day off, but I'm glad we, uh, I'm glad we did this and had this discussion, man. This was a lot of fun today. And anybody looking in to MIC, and if you're interested in, just text me, bro. Just text me. Text me Tosh at 213-458. 5997, man. We'll do the best we can to get you in, man. And hopefully trading's for you. If you find out it's not, hey, man, I'm not going to force you to trade, but I hope it is for you. And I think you're going to get the most value with, with these wonderful people, man. So Steven, we'll see you around the world. Xander, keep doing your thing, man. Hoffer, everybody keep doing your thing. Love you guys. See you next week. I am taking Monday and Tuesday off because I'm really tired and we haven't taken days off in a while. So <laughs> I'll catch you guys later, man. See you guys. See you, Tom.